Welcome to From the Quarries. Tonight's presentation, Wisdom, Strength and Beauty, looks at three of the key principles underpinning the Masonic tradition. It was written by Richard D. Marcus of George Washington's 1776 Lodge of Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. And so, to Brother Marcus, thank you for the wisdom of your words, the strength of your ideas, and the beauty of your text. I hope you enjoy it. Good evening, and welcome to tonight's presentation, From the Quarries, an archive of Masonic Law. Triads are groups of three ideas or objects. Triads appear in nature, politics and religion. To early man, the cosmos consisted of the sun, the moon and the stars. He called the natural elements earth, wind and fire. He could see triads in the three-leafed clover. He knew he lived in a three-dimensional world. In politics, the US Constitution established three branches of government, legislative, executive and judicial. And in religion, most faiths teach fealty to God, your neighbour and yourself. All are arranged in intriguing triads of ideas. Let us endeavour to understand some of the power in triads, both historically and for us as Masons. Before we became aware of triads, we think in opposites or dual concepts. Developmental learning theorists easily prove that infants learn through simple stimulus and response events. Touch a newborn baby's cheek, her instinctive reflex will be to turn her head in that direction. She quickly learns to identify her mother's voice from all others. As language is acquired, knowledge can be gathered by asking why. After a child asks a question, she is rewarded with an answer. The pattern engages a pair of concepts or dyads. Even as we advance in learning, we make decisions using dyads by giving reasons for and against an action. A straightforward method for determining a course of action involves drawing a vertical line on paper and arranging the pro and con arguments on either side. Furthermore, Socratic teaching methods train students by asking questions. The students must provide the answer or else the teacher must supply it. Catechisms are similarly simple teaching devices for youth. The first question in the Westminster Confession asks, What is the chief end of man? The student replies, The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. The question is neat, the answer is clean. This is an uncomplicated style of learning for the young. But as men, we become more complex. Answers tend to include modifiers, such as on the one hand this, but on the other that. Dualistic thinking is insufficient for more advanced analysis. Socratic methods tend to give way to Hegelian philosophy that was based on threes, thesis, antithesis and synthesis. Inspired by Christian insight and grounded in his mastery of a fund of knowledge, Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel attempted to answer all questions, natural, human and divine, using dialectical reasoning that swung from thesis to antithesis and back again to a richer synthesis. Two opposing forces resolve into a creature wholly different, like the cross-fertilization of two different rose bushes producing a more perfect hybrid. Higher learning tended to use triads. Among the seven liberal arts and sciences are grammar and rhetoric. Grammar uses subject, verb and object, three things. Adjectives are inflected into good, better 
and best, also triads. Grammatical tenses are con conjugated into run, ran, and have run. Rhetoric is similarly infused with triads. A rhetorical comment is a phrase meaning tangential or unnecessary words. Yet expert rhetoricians reveal much about the persuasive power of words and ideas in orderly lists. In Latin, word order doesn't matter. In English, man bites dog demonstrates that word order matters. We rem remember the three things that abide, which are faith, hope and charity. The order matters. The Bible did not say charity, faith and hope. We remember from the French Revolution, equality, liberty and fraternity, a triad. Providing citizens with equality and liberty produces the idea of fraternity. Rhetoricians argue that the ear wants to hear the most complex at the end of the list as it finishes or completes the first two thoughts. Triads appear in many ancient systems of thought. In numerology, triads are seen as the combination of odd, one, and even, two, that sums to three. Three becomes a symbol of perfe perfection in many ancient cultures and mystic philosophies. Threes also appear very early in geography and in geometry. We can find any location on a plane by reference to three points. Even anthropological artefacts reflect triads. From the union of marriage comes a child. The complication of three elements is needed to provide sufficient complexity to achieve an idealized perfection. Triads are also prominently employed in lodges and Masonic writings. Why triads dominate over dyads or quartets of ideas may not conclusively be known but speculative masonry permits us ample opportunity to reflect on the reasons. Threes appear prominently in the lecture of the winding stairs, as we are shown the first three steps. They remind fellow crafts of the three degrees of masonry and the three principal officers of the worshipful master, senior and junior wardens. We learn that a lodge is not singular. A lodge is not dual. It is plural, with a minimum of three. Similarly, displaying the three greater lights and the three lesser lights are central rituals for the opening and closing of the lodge. As the furniture of the lodge, they, separately, are symbols with meanings and lessons, but the fact that they are grouped into threes is not accidental. The three lesser lights are named Wisdom, strength and beauty. They are said to make masons better men. Naturally, we could have added other virtues to the list. Patience, fortitude or peacemaking. But the fact that there is but three draws your attention. The three greater lights parallel the three lesser lights. First displayed on the altar is the Holy Bible or scriptures from other religions. The Holy Bible is a collection of writings histories, and moral teachings that provide guidance in our actions. They are sometimes known as wisdom literature. Indeed, one of the books in the Apocrypha during the intertestamental period is the Book of Wisdom. King Solomon is recalled as a wise king, whose wisdom was demonstrated by the story of two women claimants for a baby. Furthermore, that wisdom is symbolized atop the worshipful master by his hat, the crown of a ruler who is wise. The square is the second great light. A right angle is key to forming a strong wall or a proper column, a wall that will withstand the vicissitudes of weather and seasons. Being on the square is commended to all master masons. We are charged to follow the rules and regulations of the craft and of the country in which we live. We see the square as a symbol of right living in our own lives, as well as order in society. The senior warden represents strength. He is the strong supporter of the worshipful master. Yet it is intriguing that the symbol of strength, the square, 
is worn as the jewel of the worshipful master. The third symbol placed on the altar is the compasses. We use a compass to draw an arc or a perfect circle. There is beauty and perfection in these structures built with arches and celestial windows. Cathedrals featured rose windows over the altar, which were circular stained glass windows beautifully adorned for the contemplation of the glory of God. We are further taught a message hidden in the compasses to keep our actions within due bounds. Beauty is orderly, balanced and under control. So too the junior warden talks of the arc of the sun as it rises to meridian height as being the beauty and the glory of the day. Hence we repeat patterns of wisdom, strength and beauty in the three offices as well as the greater and lesser lights. The rhetoric of listing wisdom, strength and beauty in this order places importance on beauty. Beauty is an odd idea for a fraternity, yet beauty is seen as the resolution of a life that is brimming with wisdom and strength. Men who exhibit wisdom and strength create harmony. Harmony itself is a characteristic of beauty in social settings as it is in aesthetics. In the Aurora Lodge, a German-speaking lodge in Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin, the German word for beauty is Schönheit, which involves balance and symmetry, as in the beauty of a well-built structure. Perhaps we can visualize that a lodge of filled with wise and strong men will produce better men in a manly sense of symmetry, strength and beauty. The three degrees emphasize the three stages of life. Our youth and adolescence are emphasized in our training as entered apprentices. Our manhood and useful work are keys to the fellow craft degree. And contemplating our own mortality is vividly illustrated in the Hiramic story for Master Masons. The posting monitors used by all three degrees today begin with three grand principles of brotherly love relief and truth. Meetings in Lodge are designed to reinforce these three principles as we practice fraternity, charity and virtue, three moral guides. Triads are used by Lodges to train our minds. As we grow in understanding, we will tend to use more and richer triads. Intelligence, force and harmony provide elegant synonyms to use today for wisdom, strength and beauty. Likewise, religion, law and morals are pillars of Masonic teaching. By religious study and contemplation, we search out wisdom. By the force and rule of law, we establish a strong and orderly society. And by inculcation of personal morality, we strive for beauty in our private and public lives. The lesson for us is that the triads used in our rituals and in our lectures are purposeful and helpful to us. Let us strive for perfection by becoming better men in wisdom, in strength and in beauty.